Hi guys, I hope you're doing well and in this video we're going to be discussing about the long run theory of production. So we've already discussed the short run theory, we've discussed the short run cost, the total product, the marginal product, the average cost, the marginal cost and everything, right? We've also seen the relationships between them, right? And now guys, in this video we'll have a brief discussion about what will happen when the firm enters the long run. But what is the long run? First of all guys, before I jump on to what the long run is, I need to tell you that when we are going to be discussing about the long run theory of production, we are going to be discussing the output in the long run and the cost in the long run. So we are going to be discussing the cost in the long run and then we are going to be discussing the output in the long run. That is obviously if the firm is expanding, so what will be happening to the output in the long run, what will be happening or what changes will be happening in the cost to, as in to the cost structure. So guys, now let's move on to what is the long run. We all know that what the long run is. Long run is a situation or long run is a time period, guys, when all the factors of production are basically variable. So we know that the long run is a time period when all the factors of production will be variable in the long run. The firm will have time to build, you know, a new factory, to install new machines, to use different production techniques. You know, it can, it can use what it, since all inputs are variable, so it can also use inputs in whatever quantity, whatever mix it wants. But in the short run, it was limited. It could not try a different mix of all the factors because the only variable factor was labor. But now it can use a different mix of capital as well as a different mix of labor. As in, it can combine them in whatever quantities it wants, you know. It can use those inputs in whatever proportion it wants. You know, maybe five units of labor, five units of capital or whatever, or maybe three units of capital, two units of labor. Because the long run is representing a situation when the factors of production are variable. The firm has enough time to increase its space build another factory, more machines, bigger plant size, etc. Right? So that's what the long run is. Also, guys, remember that whenever we'll be discussing about the long run theory of production, we will be using the word scale. Now, the word scale is used in the long run theory of production because, you know, it refers to the situation when we are increasing all input. So whenever we are using the word scale of output, we are referring to the scale of output means as in what the output will be or what will be the scale of the output or what the output will be when we have increased all our inputs. Yani we have increased all the inputs, right? However, in the short run, we could not increase all inputs, right? So whenever we are using the word scale, we are referring to a situation when the firms could increase all the factors of production. Also remember guys in the long run, uh, you know, um, if we are assuming that yes, firms are you know going to be maximizing profits given the assumption that the firms will be able to maximize profits. Also remember that you know they will be producing their output. Whatever output will the firms will be producing, you will assume that they're employing a combination of the factors of production that minimizes their cost. So whatever combination the firms are employing as far as the factors of production are concerned, whatever mix of the factors of production they are using, they are using a least cost combination of factors of production. That is a least cost mix, right? A least cost mix, a least cost combination of factors of production that is what we are assuming and they're using which basically means that they're using their factors of production that is that, that, that is their fix and the variable factors as in as in when i say the fix and the variable factor what i mean is that although yes we know capital is fixed but then by nature it's fixed but then in the long run it's variable so whatever quantity of capital or the labor it uses right um it's going to be using it in the optimum mix or the optimum mix or the optimum combination we're going to be assuming that for what firms for those firms who are going to be maximizing profits okay okay guys now moving forward we also need to understand that if the firms are to increase output in the long run so we know with the fact that all factors of production are variable in the long run but what will happen so if we say that all factors of production are variable in the long run so if we increase the size of our business maybe we build another plant or factory or buy more machines then we are basically scaling up our output we are actually scaling up our inputs right to scale up our output we are scaling up our inputs which means that we are varying all the factors right all focus on the word all here right and then we need to understand that if we increase our out inputs, that is if we double our inputs, let's say, what will happen to output? By how much would output increase? That is what we need to study in the long run theory of production. Because that is important for us. That is, we need to understand whether the output will more than double, less than double, or whether, you know, the output will change exactly in the same proportion as the increase in the inputs, right? Because that will help us determine the shape of the long run cost curves we could we, we're going to be discussing the shape of the long run cost curves in the next video but we need to understand this because so that we can determine the shape of the long run cost curves because the changes in the output will determine the shape of the long run cost curves so basically what we're studying is that you know we know that in the long run the firm will be able to double all their inputs they have the potential now in the long run to double their inputs and if they do that if they double all their inputs what will happen to output this is the concern that we need to understand we need to address 
right? Because now the firm can actually increase those inputs that were previously fixed, but, but now they are not fixed. So what is going to happen? So guys, basically three situations will arise. Number one, either the firm will be able to witness increasing returns to scale, increasing returns to scale, right? Increasing returns to scale. That is increasing returns to increase in all the factors. That is increasing returns to scale means when you increase all the factors, then what is going to happen? So if the firm is witnessing increasing returns to scale, what do you mean by that? It means that a given percentage increase in inputs, guys, a given percentage increase in inputs will lead to a larger percentage increase in output. So for example, if you're increasing your inputs by let's say 50%, your output is increasing by let's say 90%. So if your input is going up by 50%, your output is going up by 90%. That is a situation where the firm is witnessing increasing returns to scale. So for example, if we double our inputs, let's say they rise by 100%, and if output rises by 150%, we experience increasing returns to scale, right? We're experiencing increasing returns. But why, why is it that output is more than doubling? If you're increasing our inputs by, let's say 100%, if you're doubling our inputs, then why is output more than doubling? Why is our output rising by 150%? Why? What's the reason behind it? The reason is, guys, economies of scale. Now, what is economies of scale? Economies of scale is when the cost per unit starts falling. That is when the average cost starts falling. That is when the long run average cost starts falling. And we're not talking about the short run average cost. You're not talking about the short run average cost. You're talking about the long run average cost. So the long run average cost, that is, we know what average cost are. Average cost is basically cost per unit. So when the cost per unit starts to fall, it starts falling because the business is increasing or expanding itself. So when the business group, guys, grows large, it expands itself, right? It experiences economies of scale. It's a situation when the business, when the cost per unit of the business starts to fall. Now, what are economies of scale exactly and why does it happen? We're going to be discussing that in a separate video, but let me briefly tell you, so for example, if a business is, exp is expanding, it will be able to get, you know, bulk bank discounts. So it will, you know, benefit from, let's say, purchasing economies of scale. Banks will be able to lend firms at low interest rates because now banks will be willing to do business with large firms and then lend them loans at low interest rates. Since businesses have grown, gone large, they will have the money and the capital to finance skilled workers. They will be able to hire more skilled workers, right? As compared to small businesses, because obviously a, a lot of things are, in the short run, the firms are limited by a lot of factors, right? They're limited by fixed factors, let's say. Fixed factors are a constraint, remember, to increasing output. But in the long run, the firm will have the finance and the capital to actually expand more machinery and you know buy the latest equipment right and that will help increase the productivity of the business and the productivity of of the firm helping if, if it also increase the labor productivity helping the firms experience economies of scale right so that's why the average cost starts well i'm going to be making a separate video on economies of scale so just hang on till there till then now there's another thing that can happen so what if the firms increase inputs but the output less but the output increases by less than the percentage increase in inputs that is a situation that the business is experiencing decreasing returns to scale that is where a given percentage increase in inputs leads to a smaller percentage increase in output so let's say if you increase your inputs by let's say 50 percent or you double your inputs let's say so let's say forget doubling your inputs just, just let's assume that you increase your input to 50 percent right and your output rises by 30 percent that's decreasing returns to scale. Or let's say you double your inputs, let's say you double your inputs by 100%, you increase your input by 100% and your output increases by let's say 60%. That's again an example of decreasing returns to scale. So decreasing returns to scale guys happens because of diseconomies of scale. And diseconomies of scale is the situation when the cost per unit starts rising. That is the long run average cost starts to rise. Cost per unit is average cost by the way. That is the cost of producing one single unit. So this usually happens when the business grows too large. It becomes too large that the business is now not able to manage itself. Like maybe there are long, you know, hierarchies in the business, long, you know, chain of commands. There are long, uh, you know, reporting lines and that causes demotivation for the workers, especially for the workers in the, um, on, the, on, on the lower levels of the hierarchy. And because of that, what happens is that demotivation results in loss of labor productivity and that increases the per unit cost because what happens is that the productivity of the worker starts falling. That's the situation of diseconomies of scale. Diseconomies of scale could also arise maybe because of communication issues, right? Because the business has expanded so much that it's now facing managerial and communication issues now. And that's basically increasing the cost per unit of the business. That's a situation of diseconomies of scale, okay? Another situation that could arise is guys of constant returns to scale. Now constant returns to scale is a situation where you increase your inputs by let's say, you know, maybe by 
So there's an so you double your inputs and your output also doubles, right? So you increase your input by 100%, your output also doubles by 100%, right? Or maybe you increase your inputs by 80%, your output also increases by 80%. So that's a situation of constant returns to scale. That is whatever percentage, whatever given percentage increase in inputs, that is exactly matched by the given percentage increase in output, right? The same percentage increase in output. Also, guys, one more thing I would like to mention over here is that diminishing returns to labor. Uh, remember in the short run we studied about diminishing marginal returns as you increase variable factors the fixed factors become a constraint and then your marginal product and your falls and marginal cost rises this is different from decreasing returns to scale because decreasing returns to scale arise in the long run because of diseconomies of scale where all the factors can be varied and all the factors can actually be increased because that we because we are studying returns to scale scaling up our output and in order to scale up our output we need to scale up our inputs which means that we can increase all our inputs right so diminishing returns to labor or diminishing marginal returns is different from decreasing returns to scale, right? That's a decreasing returns to scale is a phenomena that applies in the long run while diminishing marginal returns applies in the short run. Okay, guys, one more thing I would like to mention. So basically for this video, you need to understand what the long run is. You need to understand that um, in, in the long run, we are assuming that the business is using the least cost combination of factors of production. That is the optimum mix of the factors of production for your, let's say, of, you know, uh, the optimum mix of capital and labor they are using as far as the optimum mix is concerned. Also in the long run, all costs are variable. Also, we need to understand for this video, you guys need to know what, you know, constant returns to scale is, decreasing returns to scale is, and increasing returns to scale is. Also, guys, one more thing that you need to know is that although we are saying that in the long run, all costs are variable, but still there is one thing that is still fixed. That is the state of technology. In the long run, the state, everything is variable, all costs are variable, all inputs are variable, but the state of technology is fixed. The state of a technology only changes it can only change or increase in the very long run and the very long run arises after the long run. So that's basically a situation. The very long run is basically a situation when the firms can change their factor quality. That is the productivity of the factors can actually change. The productivity of all the factors can change. The, pro the factor quality can actually increase. Labor productivity can go up, right, in the very long run because of maybe education, training, and that would actually... So in the very long run, that would actually help the business shift their total product, average product and marginal product up upwards. That is the, the entire total product curve would rise. The entire average product and the marginal product curve would actually shift, shift upwards in the very long run. It would shift vertically upwards, basically. And remember that in the very long run, the business can actually result into the business can, you know, maybe invest in technology. So there would be technological advancement in the long run. Like I said, there's, you know, there's, there's improvement in factor quality. Also remember that in the very long run, the business can actually invest in research and development. So that's a situation that arises in the very long run. So guys, that's about it for this video, guys. I hope you understood this video. And moving forward, we're going to be discussing the shape of the long run average cost curve. So in the long run theory of production, we need to focus on two things. That is the output in the long run, which you already discussed in this video. That is, it either um, increasing increases by a greater proportion than the change in input. That is, increasing returns to scale or the business will witness decreasing returns returns to scale or it may witness constant returns to scale but usually what happens is that if when the firm expands it witnesses increasing returns to scale because of economies of scale then it witnesses constant returns to scale and then if the business expands too large beyond the optimum size it may start witnessing or experiencing diseconomies of scale or decreasing returns to scale and also remember guys that in the long run there's no fixed cost right all the costs are variable so we won't be studying about the average fixed cost so the only cost that we are studying that we will be going to be studying in the long run is your long run average cost which we will be discussing the shape of the long run average cost in my next video so i hope to see you all there in my next video until then take care